Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series discussing complex analysis. Specifically, this is video number 4 and I'm going to present a derivation of the divergence theorem. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed, and I have a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. Before we continue, it's useful to look at the previous videos to this one. We are obviously discussing complex analysis, and for that reason, my videos on complex numbers are very applicable. In video number one and video, excuse me, in video number one on my series in complex analysis, I discussed the Cauchy-Riemann equations. In videos number two and three, I presented two different derivations of Green's theorem. I noted that Green's theorem is related to the divergence theorem, and after Deriving the divergence theorem in this current video, I will show the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. So let's begin. I will try and present a reasonably simple derivation of the divergence theorem. It's probably useful to look at the result or the bottom line up front before we even begin. The divergence theorem relates a closed surface integral of a vector field, let's say the vector field's capital A, and it relates it to a volume integral involving the divergence of the vector field. You may remember that in Green's theorem we went from a closed line integral to a surface integral. The divergence theorem is something similar except we're going from a closed surface integral to a volume integral involving the divergence of the vector field. Consider a three-dimensional volume, let's call it V of a surface S, and of the, the surface of course is in three dimensions, so it's a function of X, Y, and Z. So we're picking a volume and has a surface area, we're going to call that capital S. And let us try and evaluate the flux of a vector field, let's call the vector field capital A, through this particular volume. Now we know the flux is defined as the closed surface integral of your vector field dotted with the infinitesimal area element ds. Or we could say the infinitesimal flux element d phi is a dot ds. So the flux is the integral of d phi which is the integral of a dot ds. Note by the way it is a closed surface integral. That is very important. It's the flow of the field through your, uh, through your volume. And the, the dot product picks out the component of your vector field which is perpendicular to your surface. In other words, the, that's the part, that's the component which will flow through it. Because obviously if the component is parallel to your surface, then there would be no flow or flux through it. So the component has to be perpendicular. Moving on. Let's assume that we can break the volume up into infinitesimal volume areas. Volume elements probably shouldn't be areas, it should be elements volume elements v sub i of surface area s sub i. So we have our closed surface integral here on the center left of your screen and we're saying that we're going to assume that we can break this up into a sum. So the sum is going to be the limit of the sum of a sub i dot delta s sub i. That should make a lot of sense to you because it is essentially a Riemann sum. But both the surface area element and the, uh, and the vector field itself are all in three dimensions. So we can really look at this as having three separate components in the x, in the y, and in the z. And we still look for the limit as delta s sub i approaches zero. So we're going to consider the flux of the vector field capital A through some area elements and move along the x-axis, varying x from x sub i to x sub n, where the area elements are cubic, then varying x will call us, cause us to sweep out a tube, or a, a volume which is a tube, and I will show you this in a moment. 